Fox News alert. The countdown is on just four days to go now until Election Day and Donald Trump to speak soon at a rally in the key battleground state of New Hampshire, a state that could decide who becomes our next president. This is Outnumbered. I'm Sandra Smith. And here today, Harris Faulkner, co-host of After the Bell, Melissa Francis, radio talk show host Megan McCain, and today's hashtag one lucky guy, the former governor of Arkansas and former presidential candidate, Mike Huckabee. And he is outnumbered and good to have you on a busy day, sir. Thank you. It is a busy day, and I am definitely outnumbered, no doubt about that. <laughs> I'd love to be with you all you guys today. It's going to be fun. It's great to have Sorry. you. So Thanks. much to get to. Let's get started. Donald Trump set to speak at any minute now in the key swing state of New Hampshire. This says some analysts say the race could come down to that state's four electoral votes giving the Republican nominee enough to win the White House. A new Suffolk University Boston Globe poll shows Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton now tied in the Granite State, both at 42 percent, as the candidates are ramping up their attacks in the final stretch. Honestly, she has no right to be running. You know that. No right. If she were to win, it would create an unprecedented constitutional crisis that would cripple the operations of our government. If Donald Trump were to win this election, we would have a commander in chief who is completely out of his depth and whose ideas are incredibly dangerous. She is disqualified for running for president of the United States. She's disqualified. Most dishonest person ever to run for office. Offering a dog whistle to his most hateful supporters. He retweets white supremacists and spreads racially tinged conspiracy theories. Donald Trump was endorsed by the official newspaper of the Ku Klux Klan. Meantime, a new ABC News Washington Post tracking poll shows a tight race nationally. Clinton is now up by just three points. 47 to 44 percent. Did I mention it's just four days left to go, Governor? Yeah. All right. So New Hampshire, uh, Donald Trump is campaigning there today. He's about to speak at a rally. How important is that state? Every state is important. New Hampshire is one of those he needs to win. But, you, you know, you could look at Florida, Nevada, Ohio, Pennsylvania. They're all important. I'm, I'm just going to tell you, I think Donald Trump wins Tuesday night. I think it's going to be uh, a significant win. I don't think it's going to be as close as everybody thinks because there are a lot of people who are going to vote for Trump who don't want to tell anybody because they don't want to be called a racist or a bigot or a xenophobe or whatever they're going to get called if they do. But I'm hearing it from Every kind of person I talk to as I travel across this country from flight attendants to servers in restaurants and cab drivers and bellmen and hotels, people that don't normally vote for a Republican. But they're not just voting. They're voting but with where's enthusiasm. where's the surprise going to be then, Governor? Because right now the electoral math is mm -hmm. working in favor of Hillary Clinton. The polls show she is still up nationally. Where's the surprise going to be? That's why we do have our eyes on New Hampshire at this moment. Well, Pennsylvania, for example, why would the Clintons be going there on the eve of election if they were really that much in control of Pennsylvania. The truth is they're not. They're putting every big gun they have in Pennsylvania the night before the election. Mm -hmm. You never go to a place you've already won. You go to the places you've got to either shore up or you're worried about. They're worried about Pennsylvania. That's why they're going there Monday night. Well, and I think they're worried about a lot of states. I mean, this hour alone, Bill Clinton is in Colorado. He has three stops in Colorado right yeah. now. On this very day, on this Friday, it's interesting. I mean, you talk about maybe one or two states, but they're all kind of in play. Well, you've got North Carolina, but I think Trump wins swings, in North I Carolina. Mean. Yeah, uh, Iowa is now tilted toward Trump. There's other states. Arizona, I think, Megan, mm -hmm. is, is looking really good for Donald mm -hmm. Trump. A couple of weeks ago, Virginia you know. Virginia is fascinating because they Hillary Clinton was so confident in Virginia. She pulled out. She didn't have any campaign stops there, any headquarters there. And now it's back in play for Donald Trump. So I think the governor is 100% accurate. The other thing I want to emphasize is my good girlfriends in Phoenix who don't pay a lot of attention to politics, who are very mixed on this election. Do you know what has pushed a lot of them over the edge? Is this Anthony Weiner stuff. The idea mm. that people in Hillary Clinton's campaign knew he was sexting underage teenagers. A really good friend of mine was like, they can say whatever they want about Donald Trump saying things. You're talking about condoning pedophilia. And that, for a lot of my girlfriends, has really made the switch. All right, so I want to bring this back, Melissa, to New Hampshire, because mm. both candidates, 
Democrats, by their actions, are showing that this is very much in play, and it is. Uh, among New Hampshire independent voters, 52 percent said that the FBI announcement made them less likely to vote for Clinton. 40 percent said no, it wouldn't, have, wouldn't affect their vote at all. You know, it's so interesting. New Hampshire is such an interesting place. It's where I had my first on-camera job. I mean, they're so into politics. Everybody has a very informed opinion. They also kind of like the spotlight, you know, and like to be unpredictable, I think. And they like this idea that they're kind of turning one way or the other based on what's going out, that they're that plugged in. It'll be interesting to see which way it goes. I've got my eyes on Florida. I mean, Florida, <laughs> so I know it sounds so obvious, but Florida is where it always comes back down to. I have family in Florida. I mean, people are very tense. They're watching it. So you're watching that. All. What about Marco Rubio has been the difference for Donald Trump, do you think? Well, that's interesting. I mean, they, they've, they've seemed to work together to kind of draft off each other, which is, isn't that an interesting way for this to end? I mean, it really tells yeah. you the long road we have been down. Two people that were really at each other's throats who now in the end need each other. Need each other's throats. Each other. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it just, it, it has been an, an interesting race all around. I mean, I, I'm thankful to have had a front seat to it because <laughs> yeah. it really has been one for the ages. And I always love, too, later how we look back and say, oh, you could tell it was going that way at the time. You won't I want to say, say right time. here and now, sitting here, wow, it is hard to tell what's going on. But there are, sure. there are minor differences between Donald Trump and uh, Marco Rubio, let's say, compared to the differences between anybody and Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. We're talking about somebody who has run, for all practical purposes, a criminal enterprise in the name of the State Department and a nonprofit foundation that gave less that. than 6% to actual charity, and the rest of it was just to enrich them personally, their friends, uh, travel and live like princes and princes. Yeah. Uh, people are <laughs> Sick of that. I also think it's as simple as hope and change is a big fat lie. People are really disappointed in the last eight years. Hillary is just an extension of Obama, but worse and more corrupt. You may not know what you get with Donald Trump, but you know it's not more of the same. You know, just last on this point, I have a question about how we can still talk about swinging left and right in these states when so many people have already voted. Maybe we are overshooting the idea of that early in-person voting and not giving enough deference to Tuesday. Well, I think that there's still plenty of time. To Megan's point, look, I, I made this comment that I think Donald Trump is like a car that bumps a lot of other cars and dents fenders everywhere. He, he's just, you know, <laughs> kind of reckless out there. But his car is pointed in the right direction. With Hillary, you have a drunk driver driving the wrong way on the freeway, and a lot of people are going to get hurt and killed. Wow. Mm. That's the difference between Trump and Hillary, or as I call them, the happy warrior Trump and the very unhappy Hillary. It's Trump versus is the grump. That's what we have. Wow. wow. <laughs> All right. Well, when you put it that way. <laughs> How do I really I'm glad feel? You're here. Yeah. How do you really yeah. feel? All right. Some big chances in other important states now. Changes, I should say. We already told you about New Hampshire. Fox's decision team is moving it from lean Democrat to toss up. It also shifted Ohio from toss up to lean Republican. And when it comes to Indiana and Missouri, Fox has changed them from lean Republican to solid Republican. This is Donald Trump's lead, also appears to be growing in some red states that Hillary Clinton was hoping to flip. According to a new NBC Wall Street Journal Marist poll, Trump now holds a convincing lead in Arizona ahead by five points. We just alluded to that, as well as in Texas, where he's up by nine. In Georgia, Trump is also ahead, but just by a sliver, one point. Governor? I don't thoughts? buy it. Uh, Donald Trump is going to win Georgia by far larger margin than one point. Wow. It's just not r realistic that Georgia, who has now sent two Republican senators, is a solidly Republican state with a Republican governor, Republican majorities in their House and Senate, that they're going to really scratch their heads about whether they're going to vote for Hillary. Hillary Clinton, while she's under criminal investigation, one of the most liberal people. Georgia is a very pro-life state, even among Democrats. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to have somebody getting the votes of people uh, for a candidate who's for partial birth abortion, taxpayer funded, and the expansion of Planned Parenthood. Ain't going to happen. Just mark that one down. Okay, so going into this final weekend before Election Day, where would you tell each of these candidates to put their powder, if you will. Obamacare for Trump, or does he kind of talk about Clinton Foundation and emails? And for Hillary Clinton, 
Clinton, does she continue to try to defend herself or go negative on Donald Trump? What do you think? I think uh, Hillary should huddle with her lawyers and talk about strategy for the future. That's what I would suggest <laughs> for her. The governor throwing some shade. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, you, you just teed that one up for oh, me, Harris. No, what can right. I say? Uh, look, I think she's got to try to give people a reason to vote for her because right now there's a lot of reasons to vote against her. Uh, her election, I think, brings crisis to the process. Uh, Donald Trump needs to remind people how rough it's been under Obamacare, how We've been just decimated in our respect around the world. The Iranian deal, a disaster. Our friendship with Israel at stake. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that our economy is in tatters. The job rates mm. totally in the toilet. Yep. Uh, you know, just ask people, are you better off? If you'd like some more of this on steroids, Hillary's your girl. Right, She'll but, give you a bunch we're, more. We're four days out, so you gotta, we got to work on the math a little bit more here, Governor. Because if we look at the electoral map again, if, if Hillary wins the states that have already been rated solid Democrats, along with those that are leaning towards her right now, she'd have 283 electoral votes. You need 270. Well, can so I, where do they come can from? Can I add on to what the governor was saying? There is something in politics called the Bradley effect, where that is the $64,000 question. If people, I know people in my life that don't want to say they're voting for Trump because they live in major cities and they don't want to be harassed. They're actually called the Ivanka Trump voter if it's yes, a young professional I woman. Very and, true. and I think that you do have to keep this into thought that there are people, even for me, when I go out, I don't want to be harassed about being a Republican all the time. This is a real thing that happens. Mm. So I think there is this $64,000 question. Are people being honest and candid when they're being so, polled? So then my question would be, if you look at the Electoral College, how are they represented? Because, I mean, there is something called the faithless electoral voter, which is really scary. Mm -hmm. Because those are people who don't vote in line with what they've been told to do, or they just fail yeah. to vote, if you will. Yeah. So, I mean, there's that element that we would pray that we wouldn't see. But, but it's hurting how does her. African-Americans are electoral, coming out for her how does in the that way that they came out for Obama. Electoral vote count, though. Because uh, it means more women coming out, especially when we're discussing the Ivanka Trump voter. We're talking about young, single, uh, college-educated white women, which is the creme de la creme that both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump need. And I just read this article about this, and I really think there's a possibility that people are lying about who they are voting for. I, totally I don't know. Yeah, so, but it wow. is an old adage in politics. It's mm -hmm. called the Bradley effect. Yeah, mm. I, I, it's so interesting. I saw that. I saw that anecdotally. I feel like I need those people looking at the map, like you're saying. I mean, Larry Sabato said something really interesting the other day that more than 50 percent of the people who are quote unquote undecided end up just not voting. Right. So when you talk about trying to sway those people, those aren't really real votes. I think it spreads out in the electoral map. I heard Guy Benson talking a couple hours ago, very smartly, talking about Florida, um, Ohio, and Iowa. Yeah going for Trump, maybe North Carolina, then he needs 11 more beyond that. Those right. are some of those spots where I think you see what you're saying. It may be, a, it may be electoral Perhaps. split is what he was talking about in some places, too. I'm just yeah. curious because he needed to pick up another 11, according to Guy Benson. Right, right, um, right. Yes, exactly. Right? So, yeah. I mean, because that's really where the math comes down. You've run. Uh, what, what, how, do you, how do you scoop it up? This well, is not like going down and getting your neighbor to vote. That's not what an electoral vote is. All the traditional rules don't matter here because Donald Trump is a very different kind of candidate. He's a disruptive candidate. He's been a divisive candidate. And to, to what Megan is saying about young women who don't want to admit they're voting for Trump, they're going to go do it because they know that their choice is they look at, do I want a safe neighborhood for my kids? Do I want educational opportunities? Doesn't matter whether you're black or white. You'd rather have school choice than to be stuck in a government school that fails your kids. You look at the difference philosophically and administratively, and this becomes a much easier lift. And that's why, look, a lot of people who are hardworking union folks, they're not going to tell their union hall, by the way, I'm voting for Trump because they don't want to get screamed at. Yeah. But they're pro-life. They're also church-going people. They know Hillary holds them in utter contempt. She considers them a basket of deplorables. They're going to vote for Trump. All right. On Election Day, Fox News Channel is the only place to be. You know it. From dawn until the wee hours of the night, we will have coverage from all over the nation and, of course, the very best analysis for you. And we want to be your part of the election night coverage, your place to stop. If you voted or are getting ready to vote, post your picture on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram with the hashtag, oh look, Melissa's writing it down. <laughs> Fox, Fox News 2016, hashtag Fox News 2016. You could see it on air on election night from our brand new studio, and it really is something special. Be part of it. All right, Donald Trump will take the stage very soon. It's a rally in the battleground state of New Hampshire. We've been talking about the importance of that state this hour. Uh, with his message, will it be with four days left in the race? What will he be talking about specifically? We're live in the campaign trail. And his wife stumped this week as well, Melania Trump, making her first campaign speech since the Republican National Convention in July. 
So why now? And can she make a difference this late in the game? Stay with us.